what's happening everyone my name is Alex and welcome back to a new review. For today we have another budget friendly device called the new X5 and the main reason why I wanted to review this phone is because it actually works in the US and that's not something that we see every day. So you should be able to use this phone for AT&T and T-Mobile. You can get this phone for about $150 on Amazon and for that price we get a phone that's mostly made out of metal, we get the MediaTek 6750T which is an octa-core CPU that's paired with 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage. Out of that 32 gigs of internal storage you only have about 25 gigs left but luckily the phone can take an SD card and that SD card can also be used as internal storage. Aside from that we get a 5.5 inch screen that has a 1080p resolution, we get a 5 megapixel front facing camera and a front facing flash and a 13 megapixel camera on the back. As I mentioned earlier the back it's mostly made out of metal however we have plastic at the top and at the bottom and that's most likely covering some antennas. Aside from that we have the flash and a fingerprint scanner. That fingerprint scanner it's accurate most of the time but it's not the fastest out there so after you press the fingerprint scanner it's gonna take you like half a second for the screen to come on. On the right hand side we have the power button and the volume keys and those ones seem to be made out of metal as well and moving to the top of the device there you're gonna find the 3.5mm audio jack and that's not something that we see every day. The sound coming out of that 3.5mm audio jack is decent but I wish it would have a bit more bass. Alright so moving back to the left hand side of the phone there you're gonna find the slot for the SIM card so this device can take either two SIM cards or a SIM card and an SD card. At the bottom of the phone we have what looks to be like a fake speaker, we also have the microphone, a micro USB charging port and the speaker. That speaker doesn't sound too bad but it's just one tiny speaker but here is a quick sample of how the speaker sounds. Alright so moving back to that micro USB charging port, first of all the phone supports OTG and that's great and charging the device from 0 to 100 is done in about 2 hours so not that bad. Inside this phone we have a 2950 mAh battery and that's not the biggest battery mostly considering that we have that power hungry MediaTek 6750T. So you're kind of gonna be able to make it through an entire day and get about 4 hours of screen on time. So realistically 4 hours of screen on time isn't that much and you may have to charge the phone up twice throughout the day. And we're moving to the front of the device. Well first of all we have bezels all around the screen and a rather large chin and forehead and these days um, we're kind of getting used to seeing smaller bezels. So all the way at the top you're gonna find the 5 megapixel front facing camera, the flash and the speaker. The picture quality from that front facing camera it's decent as long as you have plenty of light. As soon as you don't have enough light well the pictures become kind of blurry and grainy but that's pretty normal for budget devices these days. The 5.5 inch screen is an IPS panel that has a resolution of 1080p. Now the colors are nice and vibrant, the viewing angles are also good but the screen doesn't seem to get that bright so whenever you take the phone outside in direct sunlight it's gonna be kind of difficult to see it. The screen sensitivity is decent, I haven't really had any issues whenever I was typing and the screen can register up to 5 touches at the same time and that's great mostly if you game on this phone. Now for navigation buttons we get physical buttons and they are sitting right below the screen and there is no way of actually changing them around so if you want the back button on the other side well it's not gonna happen. As I mentioned earlier on the back of this phone we have a 13 megapixel camera so the phone is using the stock MediaTek camera app and that's definitely not the best camera app out there however the camera app does seem to work fairly quick. The maximum resolution for video recordings is 1080p and I was kind of expecting that but what I wasn't expecting was the camera to actually take decent pictures. The pictures that I took with plenty of light are very detailed and the colors are also very vibrant. Now the dynamic range isn't the best but realistically the dynamic range isn't that great for any budget device but overall for a phone that costs about $150 I think the pictures look quite good. As for the pictures that I took in low light well the quality decreases quite a lot mostly comparing the pictures to the ones that I took in daytime but that's very normal for budget phones these days and realistically still better than a lot of other phones that we've seen uh, here on the channel. Performance wise well we've seen that MediaTek 6750T countless times in the past and getting a score of about 40,000 on the Antutu benchmark it's fairly normal and the phone has enough power so you can actually use it for day to day tasks. This phone is also running Android 7 and luckily they didn't use any heavy skin on uh, top of that Android 7 therefore there is nothing holding the phone back. So moving in between screens, opening apps, closing apps, everything is done in a decent enough time. 
since we have 3 gigs of RAM, multitasking works good as well. Of course, you're not going to be able to keep like 20 apps running in the background, but uh, for 5, 6 apps, it should do more than fine. Most apps that I tried on this phone work okay, but it takes a couple of seconds longer uh, to load, mostly when comparing this to a flagship device, but we've seen this in the past for that MediaTek 6750T. So if you give the phone a couple of seconds uh, so the apps can actually load, most apps will do fine. As we've seen for other devices using that MediaTek 6750T in the past, gaming it's also possible, but um, if you're going to start playing some um, graphic intensive games, you're going to see skipped frames here and there. However, the two games that I played on this phone um, did perform very well, but uh, they're not big games, so that's why they work quite well. The GPS unit inside this phone works great as well. It only takes a couple of seconds for the phone to find your location and once your location is found it doesn't seem to lose it. And of course I tried Google Maps on it and it does seem to work quite good. As for sensors, well, we have a whole bunch of them, including a gyroscope, and to be totally honest, I wasn't actually expecting that this phone would have a gyroscope, but it does, so using this phone for VR um, would work fine. Connectivity-wise, the phone supports 4G connectivity, but we don't get dual-band um, Wi-Fi or NFC, and I guess that's kind of normal for um, this price range. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this phone will actually work in the US, and that's the main difference between this one and a lot of other phones from China, because most phones um, that we see from China don't actually work in the US. The call quality is also decent, and the speaker on top here seems to get loud enough so you can hear most conversation. As for the speeds over Wi-Fi and the 4G network, well, the speeds over 4G weren't that uh, um, great, but the speeds over Wi-Fi were decent. And it's time to conclude this video, so I can't really say that this is a bad phone, but I can't really say that this is an exceptional phone either. So pretty much everything about this phone is average. The screen is average, the cameras are average, the battery life, well, maybe it's average, but it could be better. So everything about this phone is average. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.